We've already talked a little bit about clients and servers. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about scripting on either of those sides, either on the client side or on the server side. Uh, client side scripting uh, is scripting that happens in your browser or at least on the client's computer. The most common form of this is JavaScript, but there are other client-side technologies. Flash is a client-side technology. Uh, what it means is it delivers the program to the browser, and then the browser, either through a built-in processing, which is ECMA script or JavaScript. ECMA script is the standards-based name for JavaScript. JavaScript is an implementation of that standard. Um, but JavaScript is, is, at this point, in most modern browsers kind of built in, or there's plugins for things like Flash and other client-side uh, languages. Um, so th in this case, it gets actually delivered to the, um, the computer itself, and it allows the computer to, to run the script. So for example, I can um, have a form. This is called form validation. Form validation can happen either on the client side or on the server side, or in most cases, both. But it makes sure that the things that you're filling out in the form are valid. So if I hit send details, it's going to pop up this window that says, please check the, the terms and conditions box. All of that happens in the client. That is, it never communicates with the server to do that. It just kind of looks through the form as I hit submit and runs it through some um, some programming right here in JavaScript. And so it says, hey, you know, if, if it turns out that the, the form isn't checked when someone tries to submit it, then alert them that they need to check the box. And so all that programming is happening right here in the HTML page in this case. Um, it's, it's code that's been delivered and gets executed on my client machine inside my browser. The other way that uh, processing happens is on the server. And PHP is one example of a number of, of ways that you can do server-side programming. Um, in this case, you actually just send in a request by hitting, usually by hitting submit. So if I did this right and hit submit, this is actually sending something to the, the server. The server is doing some server-side processing and you know creating this page. Uh, so basically, I send a request to the server. The server takes my request, does something with it, generates an HTML, you know, maybe pulls in some files or some databases or does something with a mail server, um, generates a, an HTML page, and I get delivered a pure HTML page. I never get to see any of the PHP code. Um, so far, we've looked at HTML, JavaScript, CSS. You can always view the source and see what they are sending you. Um, but in the case of PHP, it all happens on the server side. So if we search for something like monkeys, we do the search, it goes to the server side, it generates this page. Um, and if we look at the source, first of all, it's not going to be pretty because it's it's not meant for humans to read. Um, but moreover, and it's, and it's a lot of code, it's going way off to the right here. But moreover, um, there is no PHP in that code um, because it's already been processed and it's created an HTML page. Uh, that's all that's getting delivered is the HTML page. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you want to, one of the one of the kind of side issues here is that if you want to develop in PHP, if you want to create PHP, you can still do it with a text editor on your own machine, but you have to put it on a web server for it to work. So when you're using HTML or CSS or JavaScript, since all that's needed to interpret that is the browser, you can do that on your desktop and load it up and it'll work. That's not true of PHP. It has to be on a web server, even if that web server is your own computer, for it to actually work. Finally, there's something called Ajax. Ajax is a combination of technologies that use the client side and the server side. And a lot of modern websites that are very interactive, things like, say, Google Docs are built using Ajax because you can type on the on the client side and it has lots of programming that has to do with the interpretation on the client side, but it's also going back to the server and saving your document, for example, or getting information from people who are commenting on your document. So it kind of is a back and forth without actually having to request a whole new web page. It allows you to request basically pieces of that, that web page or information for that web page. Um, we won't deal as much with Ajax, but just be aware that these technologies often work work hand-in-hand hand, um, with the client side and the server side reinforcing one another.